Hello, we're going to be going over some Rolasana moves with uh, Tiffany and we will be showing uh, a little routine that one can do um, uh, using these foam rollers using several different sizes. This is the 5 inch liner roller and this is the 4 inch liner roller and we like to interchange them depending on the body part we're using or the, uh, the body part we're rolling and the, uh, the size of the body and how much pressure one can tolerate. So we'll be interchanging uh, back and forth. To start off with, we're going to be sitting like Tiffany is here, just with the sit bones slightly off the roller. So the sit bones are just in the back here. And so she can feel the connection uh, in the soft tissue of her hamstrings um, just at the sit bones. Um, what she's doing is she's uh, keeping her spine erect. And if she leans to the left and right side, she kind of wiggles. Um, she can feel the pressure on one uh, hamstring attachment versus the other and feel which one's tighter or which one is uh, uh, more loose. Another thing we can do here is that she can grab as she is with one hand and create a long stretch along the side of her body, um, extending the neck. So we have this one long of connectivity from, especially into this trapezoid area, with some resistance by the grab at the roller. And then of course we can switch sides. In all of these moves we want to take our time and breathe. For the purpose of this instruction we're going to keep moving through. Um, the other thing we're going to do is one side and then the other side. So we're just going to do one side example as we move through the sequences. So from here, Tiffany's going to work the uh, upper part of the, uh, the buttocks, which would be the glute med area, which is an area that is quite tight on a lot of us. Um, just off the back hip bone is the glute medius. Now we're going to be working the IT band ultimately, which is this connective tissue down here. Um, however, the IT band connects several groups of muscles, um, and they start up here. Um, this is a tensor fascia lati up here, and I mean the back, we got the glute medius, and they combine into the uh, IT band down near the knee. Now the IT band is just connective tissue, uh, so you're not really bringing oxygen uh, or length into the, connecti into the IT band or the IT connective tissue, um, but what you can do is loosen up the attachments before you hit this one. As many people know with uh, foam rolling, it actually is one of the more painful moves you can do, but one of the most beneficial for uh, both knee uh, pain and hip pain, ultimately. Uh, we want to reduce the pressure that uh, the IT band has on the knee. Um, so what we're doing first is working right in the back at the top of the butt, uh, just below the top of the what, what's called the ASIS, uh, the top of the ilia bone in the back here. There's a muscle just below. Now if we release this, this has a benefit on the back as well. So we're just going off to the side and what Tiffany has is her knee uh, open. So her leg is rotated out, which changes the angle of her femur head and exposes uh, more tissue into the, uh, to the roller. She's leaning to the side a bit. If this is too difficult to do with the ankle on top, you can extend it with a slight bend in the knee. So we have the same rotation in the femur. The other option is to hold the knee. So you grab the knee and just let it hang out in front, just about right there. Extend the arm, and so you can just let the, uh, the leg kind of hang there. Ideally, you have the flexibility uh, in your leg to put it uh, to cross the ankle over the other knee. If you have any knee pain while you do this, then you can avoid this move and go to this one here. It's what <laughs> Tiffany is doing is rolling her uh, glute medius, a bit of the piriformis, and if she puts her ankle back on top of her knee, you can angle down towards the ground. Now, this is a great way to start. When people ask, what should I roll, how do I roll, one of the simplest things to do is just sit on the roller and you'll feel it. So extending the leg out, coming back onto the side, 
we're going to work the side angle here. This is the tensor fascia latte, which is also the, another of the muscle groups that connects to the IT band closer to the knee, which is in this region down here. And so we can lie all the way down. You can put the other leg over the other arm over the top, so it's like a side plank. And we add, that adds some pressure here in this area. What Tiffany can do is rotate her hip towards the camera a bit, uh, and it creates more pressure. Um, we want to try to get the, this group of muscles to go towards the back posteriorly. So if we rotate the hip forward, we get more of that angle at the uh, connection of the roller. And all of these moves, we're going to breathe, we're going to take our time, and just uh, allow the release to happen. So from here, we can come on to the front side. So we're going to get the hip flexors, which is right at the top of the quad, this region right here. By coming up uh, with the knee along the side, it forces more pressure at the connection on the other side of the, um, where the roller is. And it's quite a comfortable position. Um, if you prefer more pressure, I know that Tiffany prefers to have more pressure here, so the smaller radius of the smaller roller will get in a little bit more. And here she switched sides, so you can see the connection right at the top here at the hip flexors, just below the hip bone. So we're working this bit right here. Just relaxing, sinking in. Um, from here, she can bring up the knee towards the sky a little bit. The right, left leg coming up, right. And so from here, and then rolling back down, and it just works different angles of that hip flexor. And so now you're working both the top hip flexor and the tensor fascia latte. Really important to work the connections to the hip. So from here, Tiffany's going to roll, elbow her way uh, along the top of her quad towards her knee. Again, you can do this with the larger roller or the smaller roller, depending on the pressure as preferred. The smaller roller is something you generally build up to. However, some people prefer the the strength or the rather the uh, the smaller circumference of the roller to get more pressure. Um, Tiffany's been rolling for a while so she's she prefers the small roller in some parts and the five inch roller, this larger one on other parts. Taking your time breathing allow the muscle to respond and melt and that is only a time-based thing you cannot force it. So coming towards the knee, assuming we have all the time, um, and then from here, we're going to work the inside of the leg. So this is the adductor group, which is all through here. Um, when we have knee pain, oftentimes it, this muscle group, which is a series of muscles that connect from the groin to the inner, of the, inner part of the, the leg, um, these can be tight and shortened, and that causes our, our leg to rotate outward. Um, so the leg goes here because this is shorter, so our leg rotates outward, and then the outside leg overworks. We want to correct that and bring the legs to track more uh, straight. This is another thing we want to roll before we get to the IT band, our famous IT band, or rather infamous. We've worked the glute medius, the TFL, tensor fascia latte. We've worked the top hip flexor, and now we're working the inside leg. Down by the knee uh, is a, it's an important muscle group called the gracilis. Um, this is another time pressure thing, time release. Um, you can just hang out. This is very relaxing. It feels very comfortable. And we can work the roller towards uh, the inner uh, leg. <clears throat> the other thing we can do is uh, rotate the, the leg to expose different angles of the, uh, the tissue. So Tiffany's taking it. And you can also straighten the leg if you have that flexibility. And then working towards the groin.
it helps to come up on the elbows. If you come up on the elbows, it gives more pressure uh, down into the roller. If you come down towards the ground, it takes a little bit of the pressure off, so you can adapt. So after you work the inside leg, um, Tiffany was going to uh, try the smaller roller, which if this is not enough pressure, uh, again, you can adapt. Sometimes you can start with the larger roller and then graduate in the same session to the, the bigger roller and use the extra roller as a pillow. So from here, we've worked the, the glute medius, we've worked the TFL, the hip flexor, the inside of the leg. Now we're going to go to the IT band, now that we're all prepped. So what Tiffany's going to do is the IT band. And the IT band is very sensitive. Um, and she's going for it with the 4-inch roller, which is quite more on the aggressive side. Um, she's also got two legs stacked. Two legs stacked gives you more uh, pressure onto the roller. So this is probably the the most pressure you can provide yourself. Um, or if we switch rollers, which is going to be a little bit easier on the, uh, the, the IT band. So she has one leg off, which creates less pressure, um, or she could stack. An important thing here is to rotate the hips towards the camera a bit, a little bit forward. So you're about one o'clock. If straight up and down is noon, just about one hour forward and that gives the direct, uh, the angle uh, of that we're looking for to bring that IT band um, towards the uh, posterior. Um, down here is where the IT band starts. Now the IT band again is connective tissue. So we re reduce the tension by working all of those muscle groups that are attached to the IT band before getting here. Um, now that we're here, um, we want to try to free that IT band from the muscle below it, which is the tensor, uh, sorry, which is the vastus lateralis. And it can have some fascial adhesions. We want that IT band to slide smoothly. So what Tiffany can do here is cross fiber on the IT band. Rather than direct pressure and rolling back and forth in the IT band, which you see a lot of uh, people doing for releasing the IT band, we can do another way, which is more just to rock. So we're, if this is the uh, IT band on the bottom leg, we're trying to move back and forth along the top of this IT band to create some uh, <coughs> um, cross-fiber uh, manipulation. And she can also take one leg off and just work one leg at a time. So it depends on the pressure that you're looking for. Taking your time, breathing, allowing for the release. And moving closer to the knee, up towards the hip. Now from here, we could spend a lot more time doing this. We're going to rotate so we're working on the outside hip line. This is another one of the uh, muscles and uh, kinetic chains that gets uh, quite uh, blocked um, and creates back pain, um, especially a lot of sitting. So this is not the back of the leg where the hamstring is. It's about 45 degrees. Um, so her foot is rotated off the side 45 degrees. I like to cross the ankles um, down near the ankle here and it gets about the right angle and we can pull ourselves back. So we're going from the corner of the knee, which is 45 degrees, not the bottom of the knee, not the side of the leg, rather. So starting at the knee. And then we're going to work towards the top. Taking your time very slowly. For the purpose of the video, we're going to be moving a little bit quicker. And you can feel a solid line. When you're rolling yourself, you can feel the connection all the way to the top of the butt. Back to the glute medius. And then what we call this in Thai massage is outside line three or the hip line. So we can end up where we started, which is the glute medius. And from here, we can roll the IT band attached. I'm sorry, the hamstring. So in this one, uh, I like to put one leg back, and you can have one knee up in the sky like this, or it can be on the ground depending on, on your preference behind you. And 
flat. So your foot's tucked underneath. So this is comfortable for some people. Some people prefer to have the knee up towards the sky, uh, uh, up, up in the air to, for stability. So from here you can feel the connection uh, at the uh, hamstring attachment or the ischium tuberosity. Um, especially near the hip we have the gravity. Down towards the knee it's harder uh, to get as much pressure unless you are flexible enough you can get your, grav your, your body weight over uh, your hamstring. So now we've worked most of the muscles, if not all the muscle groups, from the knee to the hip in one leg. At this point, I would have you repeat to the other side. And after we've done both legs, we're going to work the calf and the lower leg, so from the knee down towards the foot. So coming up with the, uh, the roller, Underneath the calf, you can have both legs out. The smaller roller will give you more pressure, the larger roller will give you less. Uh, in this scenario, we're holding ourselves up, so it requires some social shoulder strength. Um, you take your time, you rock, you go back and forth with your uh, the angle of your feet, so you're, you're catching uh, the different aspects of your muscle groups there. Uh, there's several muscles in the calf, soleus, being one of the gastrocnemius. We're going all the way up to the corner of the knee, just where the attachment is to uh, the, the calf attachment. So we're coming up right here. It's very important. It's a nervy area, and this is something that gets uh, clogged with fascial adhesions, the peroneal nerve. So we can rock over the corner. You'll feel it. It'll be a little bit electrical. And that has a benefit down near the feet. Sometimes you can feel a little bit of flicking action and you can feel the, the electrical, electrical referral down near the top of the foot. This is a good thing. We want the energy to move freely. So we can go all the way to um, the ankle after working the whole calf. Another way that we can work the calf is, uh, uh, is, a, is a different exercise we'll, we'll do after rolling the shins. So we can come up onto the, the roller, put the roller underneath the knees, and we're going to work the tibialis anterior. It's a bit looking like child's pose. And here the pressure comes from how you can square the body over the top of the roller. And here Tiffany is quite comfortable. When you first do this it may not be as graceful as Tiffany is doing it right now. With time, though, you can help re release this tension that's in the front here. This is the shins. Every time we take a step, we're pulling up the foot using the tibialis anterior. This action. We're running, walking. Um, you can do both legs at the same time, both shin bones, or we can put uh, more weight on one versus the other. Tiffany, so maybe uh, turn 90 degrees to the camera the other direction if you face the hill. You can see how she crosses the ankle. This is another option to increase the pressure. She crosses and leans back. There's a lot of pressure right here on the tibialis. This is probably the max you can get unless you use a smaller roller. So from here we can do both of these shins proceeding like this and then we can come up onto the top of the ankles. I think that's a good direction. From here we have an important energy exchange right at the top of the ankle called the Wingate and Thai Massage. Um, it's a soft tissue area just right at the top of the ankles. And <clears throat> Tiffany has her weight square over this area um, and she's leaning back. So you can wiggle side to side, you can pedal the feet. helps create some uh, uh, movement in the, in the tissues of the ankle. So if we come up from here, we can go to the tops of the feet. If you come forward just a little bit, now we have a big stretch in the tibialis. The top of the feet are on top of the roller. And you can lean back and create a 
stretch in your front line from your hip flexors into your psoas. This is a bit more on the advanced side in terms of uh, flexibility. Um, another very nice one is to work your uh, massage your own feet. So you can come back onto the roller a little bit so it's back near the ankles. Taking her thumbs, she's going to work her arch of her foot and leaning back with her body weight. Tiffany, maybe we can turn towards the, uh, the side and you can get a uh, look at the angle from the side. So working the, the plantar fascia, for those that wear heels, this feels quite lovely to work the inner part of the foot here, the sole. Uh, this is a good exercise for those with plantar fasciitis. Tiffany's taking her old fist and putting it into her uh, sole. From here, we can go back to working the calf. This is a second calf exercise. We can take a smaller roller with the feet on top of the, with the ankle still, uh, with the roller still under the ankles here, the larger roller. What this does is allow the, the angle um, of the foot to stay straight um, when you have the big roller at this location, rather than being the feet underneath and being sickled. So it's quite comfortable. And here we're putting pressure on the calf using the weight of our body. So we can go with a smaller roller, we can get closer to the uh, corners of the knees, and we can come back towards the heels, ultimately coming to the Achilles heel, Achilles tendon rather. Again, for those that wear heels, uh, it shortens the line in the back of, uh, of our legs. So when we're always pointed like this, this becomes all short. This is the angle we have when we're wearing heels. So we're trying to stretch this back work the calf to release this whole line and she's stretching the back here uh, of her feet with her her toes on the ground like this so here is uh, pressure on the Achilles tendon and she's stacked all the way through so you can feel the way your pelvis sits on top of your heels. You got a nice release in the hamstring attachments. Pressure on the Achilles tendon. And then you can feel these soft tissue connections and, make, and, and allow yourself to breathe all the way up to the top of your neck. Feel vertically stacked. It's a very comfortable position and you're getting the benefit of stretching in the back of the sole here. For those that are a bit more advanced and need more out from underneath the knees and that creates a sharper angle in the toes. This is called uh, chanting pose. From here we can actually stand on the roller so we can continue to work the feet. The smaller roller is uh, a nice option here. It gets 